Hi everyone. Oh, I nearly had the circle right. Oh, look at that, it's seamless. Hi everyone, welcome to some playthroughing, some first classing. I am, uh, I should just get like a thing of the table so I can just get a screenshot without me in it. Do you know what I mean? Always thinking at the end of the stream. Why didn't you, why didn't you get a nice screenshot when the screen was all empty? That's what I'm doing right now. In the, I may be breaking the immersion and showing you that I'm not really floating in purple space. I am, uh, I've got a cheap circular green screen. Okay, the, the, full, the print screening didn't work. Do I have to use the other control for print screen to work? Technicals. At least I've got the microphone on this time. We're... A bit further forward than I was last stream. There we go, that'll have to do. Hi everyone, welcome to first class. So, as requested, I was only requested by, like, one person. But that counts as a request. First class won the playthrough vote over on Patreon a couple of months ago and got a two-player playthrough, finally, like five years after it came out. And, uh, long-time supporter, Stasia? Requested it. I say it like that because uh, I've wondered for about for nearly five years, probably Stasia, how to properly pronounce your name. I do apologise if I'm saying it wrong at last now, but hey, let's let's break that ice and finally admit that. I don't know. I looked into it. Rach thinks. Well, yeah, it, it's obviously Stasia. I worry about these things. But hi everyone. Hi Matt. Moran. How's it going in Serbia? Scourge. Steve. Michael. Hi everyone, we're going to play some first class. So yes, I said all of that stuff. There's a two-player playthrough that you can see out there. Uh, so solo is going to work very similarly. So don't expect any big changes. The, the benefit of that is you don't really need to learn anything. If you want to know how to play it solo, you know if you know the multiplayer, you're just more restricted. Uh, so some of the stuff, some of the interplay between the players. So the, the main thing is this card display is where a lot of your actions are going to take place. Combos will happen later in the game, end of rounds, things like that. But the main structure of the game is there are going to be six rounds and you will get three cards in those rounds. Now, in the multiplayer game, these rows only disappear when the number of players, that many cards have been taken from a row. So even in a two-player game, you think, I really want two things from that row. So... I want to take this one first and really hope that the other person goes for something from the other row and then I'll get the second thing and it'll be amazing. In the one player game, you don't have that kind of thought because you are more restricted. You can have one thing from each row and these cards correspond to actions, give you new carriages for your train, move your conductor, all sorts of things like that, all to try and get you loads and loads of points. So you've got to think of your best path through this while being very restricted. So First Class has five modules as well in its base game. I know it came out with a couple of mini expansions. I don't have any of that. So we're still using stuff that comes in the base box. Uh, but I did, I think I did B and D for the playthrough. So I'm doing I'm doing A and E, uh, the, the five modules that are in there. But I'd show off the other two because one is a murder mystery module that originally didn't support two players. And then I think they changed it so that it did. But we never played it. We've always heard that it it wasn't great. And, and Rach doesn't really like First Class, to be honest. It's not like uh, we've played it tons uh, multiplayer that many times. I think it, it must have just been a bad experience, like five years ago. I think she'd maybe like it if she tried it again. But hey, there's, there's plenty of other games out there, isn't there? So how do I start? This is my titchy train to start us off with. I've got two trains, but a, a little carriage on each. See, there isn't... You're going to be in the open air if you're going to be taking a ride on my train. We've got our two conductors ready to go all the way along the trains, earn us some points. We've got our 
like the journey of our train uh, ready over here we are ready for some more destinations to come out here uh, and our train can get us bonuses when it moves on spaces and uh, bonuses when rounds end as well is another thing that it can do and i have one end game scoring card it's going to give me two points at the end of the game for every card of this type that i take so they are the cards if we look at the display uh, you can kind of see this picture here corresponds to the background picture of these cards. So cards that get you uh, new carriages or upgrade your carriages. Two points each for just getting those. And over the course of the game, uh, you may well get opportunities to get more endgame scoring cards. I could get even more points. I could you know, double up on getting more things from those cards. The bottom is a bonus action. You don't get that for the, th for the cards you start the game with. But you will get it if you get an endgame card later on. Uh, so, do I need to tell you anything else? We've got one gold. Gold can be spent at any time for a point. You do that at the end. Uh, or you can spend uh, every four gold gets you an endgame card. You can also do these actions at the bottom that will become more apparent, more obvious, because these symbols are everywhere in the game. Uh, you can perform an action. You can spend a coin from the column the coin is in. You have to fill in your coins bottom to top, left to right. And uh, yeah, you can spend a coin from that column to do the action in that column. So the best one, upgrade any carriage. You can only do it if you've earned loads of gold. But yeah, hopefully we'll we'll get there. We'll get a load of stuff. Uh, but yes, we are trying to put more carriages on our train. This scoreboard is probably going to have to shift out of the way if I'm going to get a load of carriages and things. We're going to move stuff about. It's all going to be great, isn't it? So the carriages, A is contracts. Contracts are these kind of cards. And they are in every module, I think. There, so there are there are base game cards for each of the three decks in the game. There's one, two, and three decks. So there are cards for those. There are also cards for each of the three phases in each of the modules decks as well. So you basically get all the ones, all the twos, all the threes together from the base set and the two modules you have picked. And then shuffle them all together, bring them out, Three times six cards come out. Twice for each of the numbered decks. I think there's two cards, or is it four? I think it's two, four cards. Some cards won't come out, basically. Even so, it's going to be a bit different in the order that they come out, and some you're not even going to see. Matt, you don't care for the trains accommodations. Why? Well, you, you could make do with this. Think how cheap it's going to be to get yourself to uh, the uh, Constantinople we're heading to. Like, th think this is going to be the cheapest journey to Constantinople. You're going to have to hold on tight, but... Think of the savings. Hey, Legends DM, how's it going? Hi, everyone on Twitch, by the way. There seems to be th something on Twitch that I assume is a, a glitch. It says there are a lot more people watching sometimes than there are. I think that might be a holdover from when we did the Roleplayer Legends, Roleplayer Adventures stream, and we got hosted for a bit on Board Game Geek. Uh, hey, Kelly. Oh, your husband wasn't a fan. Yeah, for, for some reason, it, it just doesn't click with people sometimes. Oh, I thought it ended too quickly and there weren't enough actions. Uh, maybe maybe that's what Rach thought. It's, it's gone too long. Like, the actual specific memories have gone of why she didn't like it, but she remembers definitely that she didn't like it and doesn't want to play it again. So, yeah, I, I didn't realise this was so lovable either. It was only when I put it in the vote, I think, a, a couple of months ago on Patreon, and, um, yeah, someone mentioned in the comments that, yeah, you can you can do it solo now, and it's just a little... There's a there's an FAQ additional rules document that, uh, that's... The publisher put out that's on board game geek that kind of clarifies a few different rules tells you how to use the organizer but then also says oh by the way you can play this solo now just don't really change any rules see what you can see what you can do there so that that means like it's great that you can play it solo and it is tough to decide all of these things but because it's a beat your own score game comparing your scores between loads of games not that i'm going to get to play this loads anyway not that i'm particularly complaining but you know Comparing your scores over different games with this, your scores could be very different based on the order in which these cards come out. Even not even between the rounds, just in the rows. If uh, particularly if particular combinations of cards come out all in the same row and you can only have one of them, it's going to limit your score. That said, you know I'm, I'm not an expert at any of these games, so I don't know how much it's going to hold me back. It is a Mr. Plow jumper. You got to have uh, you got to have some Mr. Plow. Rich got me another Homer. Uh, jumper for this year, but it's not Mr. Plow. It's a great jumper. It'll get it'll get worn, but you got to start with Mr. Plow, right? So I should probably do some actions and things. This is just a scoreboard. Don't worry about that. 
Uh, so, yeah, you get points from all sorts of ways. Let's look at some of the cards that are out here. Uh, do I need to say any other things? Oh, yeah, I'm a bit, I'm, I, th I think it's gone all right. But, yeah, I've, I've got a cold at the moment. So, hopefully, it's going to be okay. I'm not going to be too woozy. Uh, and, yeah, if you would like to subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitch and all of that stuff and ways to support the channel are all over the bottom of the screen. Say those things. Uh, but thanks for watching, though. Right, what should I do, then? So we've got, I've talked about contracts a little bit, uh, contracts, if you meet these conditions, so in these cases, it's have these carriages, the two different rows represent your two different trains, so have the first two cars on each train be at least level one, they start out at level zero, and you only have one on each train, uh, but we can get some more later, uh, oh, I need to go back to the display, don't I, so fulfill that, and then you can kind of hand in the card, uh, to get this bonus, which is upgrading three one carriages to twos. So a lot of the time it's specific numbers. When you see a carriage, arrow, another carriage, that's an upgrade. So it has to be those specific numbers that are being upgraded as well. When it's just an arrow from nothing and then the zero, that's get a new carriage. So that can be quite uh, lucrative as well. Uh, you can move your conductors, your cat, your Train carriages will score you points according to the, the number at the top of them if your conductor for that train has moved onto the carriage and it's been upgraded. Your train can move along. That's how you end up getting bonuses round by round from the destinations you have visited. You can get new cards with new destinations for your train to keep going because on the board at the start, you've only got three spaces for it to move and then that's that. Uh, what else have we got? We've got just get some coins. It tells you what coins can do. They're cool. They're useful. And then we've also got the engineer. Oh, yeah, we have got both types. It's the engineer and the switch cards. So the switch cards, the both of the cards for module E, both of the types, go between your trains here. Now, all the other upgrades and things for the other modules go at the top or bottom of uh, the carriages. These go in the middle here. So this one has got a condition it wants us to meet. So level two and your conductor be on the particular carriage. Which carriage is it referring to? Well, on the top train, this one. On the bottom train, this one. You could take it if you haven't got enough carriages left. And so at the end of uh, round scoring, you would get five points for each of those things that you've done. Quite a nice point scoring thing. The engineers work in a similar way. You get some coins straight away if you take them. And then if you meet the condition there of having something upgraded to level four, then you can upgrade this carriage or this carriage. Is it this specific one that needs to be upgraded to level four? It's not as clear on the, the engineers. Actually, this is how long ago this was. Still printing out rule books when I bought uh, German copies of games. Not there with the iPads and, or at least not willing to acquiesce to it yet. Yeah, yeah, you get a, Immediate one-time bonus. So both trains showed on the left. Yeah, so as soon as that one becomes a four, you can do any upgrade to this one. So it's probably not going to be a great upgrade because you are restricted in the ways that these cards can go. So basically it has to go in descending order. You can never upgrade a card on the right to be a higher number than one to its left. So best carriages at the front going on hopefully all the way to a completed train in Constantinople. So I get points basically for having these cards initially. So it would be nice to get a load more carriages, start upgrading them a bit, but it would also be quite nice to move my train and get some new destinations for my train. And this bonus, which would kick off at the end of year scoring, is move your train more and get a free zero carriage. So that could be great as long as I can get more destinations for my little train. That would be quite nice. There's a weird ticking sound in here. <laughs> That's okay. I'm sure it's not coming across in the uh, microphone, but still. So is all that okay? Yes. I believe I'm still coming through. Right. So what do I want to take? I think I want to do that. I think I want some more destinations and get my train moving a little bit. 
you can i believe you can you can do the first take the first player action you discard a card when you take in that and these things in the multiplayer game correspond to uh, what each player gets so you as first player would get two coins for doing this action but you throw away a card for going one of your card actions second player gets nothing third player and fourth player gets some carriages and things as compensation for the fact that they're now they've been shifted back in turn order so kind of leaning towards that that neither of these are things that I get points for at the end. But we could even just do some upgrading. Or we could wait for some train movement. Contract would be nice to fulfill later. Just this is this is the kind of stray away the the <laughs> the toughness of uh, first class, the restrictions that it puts you under right from the get go. Right. So I, th I think I might go for that. I'm going to go for a destination postcard. Pop it here. So you can see now it has extended our route. So the compass things correspond to the bonuses at the bottom. You'll get them every intermediate scoring, which is every two rounds. Uh, and then these points you'll get immediately for going over those spaces. So now I have taken something from a row. In the solo game, that is it for all of those cards. So you are just choosing one of those six cards, and then that's that. So make sure you're choosing the right thing. So what would I like on the top then? If I'm gonna go for the train movement, make sure I get some, uh, at least I'll get a couple of coins as income, even if the train doesn't move anymore. The top hasn't, doesn't get me any new carriages. It could do me some new upgrades though. I would basically have to do all of this to one of my carriages. I would turn the zero into a one and then turn that one into a two. I could get an engineer that would be nice later. Once I got to level four, I could do some free upgrades. It would get me a couple of coins now that might get things moving. Moving my conductors would be pointless because I haven't got two carriages. Well, it wouldn't be pointless, but I would be wasting some of that movement. Or, you know, 10 points every round. I probably wouldn't be able to do this for a little while, though. Get the things upgraded to a two and then get the conductor on. Although... That's a nice combo, isn't it? But I, I want to get my train moving. Let's let's stop thinking about this row. Get rid of it before it tempts me into, well, possibly a better idea, but <laughs> we'll see how that turns out. Uh, so yes, on my train. I've now got two movements. So move one, two. Cards that you get like this that just do an action and then that's it, they go down here into your discard pile because they're going to count for points potentially at the end of the game if you get those end game scoring things. So I've just got my third card to pick from now. There's a contract that would happen much later on. It's great rewards, extra train movements, any upgrade. And, but to do it, you've got to have 442 on both trains. That doesn't seem achievable for a long time. I might go, because it's going to be worth a couple of points and it'll start us on the upgrade track a bit. I'm going to go for this upgrade card. So these are gone. And this is pretty much the first round done. And then in my train, I can upgrade any zero to a one. Let's go for the top one. There we go. Flip it over and it's now a one. And uh, I can turn any one into a two. At the moment, I've only got one one. So it's going to have to be that. Wouldn't it be magic if I flipped this and it was suddenly a two? No, I've got to get, uh, I've got to get one from the, the two stack. There we go. So this is worth zero right now. But if I can get the conductors to move at least a space, then in the first scoring, which happens after the second round, in the first scoring, I would get two points because the conductor would be looking at a level two carriage. So that is the first round complete. That's it. There we go. There are going to be six of those. And that is the whole game. But you can see as you get more of these cards, more of these carriages, more of these uh, intermediate scoring bonuses, things will hopefully chain off each other. So what are we seeing for the next round? How many cards is that? Don't lose count. You only got to count the first row and then just copy it. So we've got some more destinations, potentially a bit nicer destinations. But they are on the same row as the double train movement. I don't know if another one of those is coming. Because it would be very nice, right? 
if I could move my train another two spaces. So at the moment, I'm getting this in intermediate scoring. I'm getting these two coins. If I move it another two spaces, three points, nice. But I would also get this income and move another two spaces and get those three points. So I wouldn't need to get another destination card necessarily because I've still got two spaces it could move. You don't want to waste movement by not having anywhere for it to go. So I'll probably want to think about getting that double train movement. If that's the only card, that might be my decision made for that row. We've got some more carriages and things. Yes, so there are four cards that don't come out. So there wasn't another double train, by the way, if you were wondering. So there are... Oh, you know what? Forget that. Look at this engineer. If I get the, tra the carriage above it to be level one, I can do a free upgrade on these carriages. But for taking it, rather than getting coins, I get a double train movement. So surely I would get that, right? Surely that would be the thing to do. Let me check. I've lost my lovely little... My lovely little thing that told me... All about first class. Make sure I'm not getting all of these things wrong. So what would I want from other rows, though, if I do that? Probably wouldn't need another destination right now. Probably wouldn't want another engineer. So what would I want from this row? Double um, conductor movement, maybe? And then if I go for double conductor movement, I'm going to want some more carriages so they at least don't waste that movement. So that might be the three things decided already. It does mean... Yeah, it does mean that I wouldn't get to activate this all of the way. Although maybe you can you can do your scoring things in any order. So what if I could spend coins to add some zero carriages? That's the ability of your first column here. Spending coins from there adds a zero carriage each time. But it just spending these early coins means it's going to take longer for you to build up to these better and better actions. So, now these destinations are nice, especially this one. Look at it. New carriage and upgrade something from a zero to a two, basically. Great later on, even for pulling out those late things, but I think I want the engineer more than anything. So, I think. Do I want a pair coin now then? I think I'm going to pay a coin down here on my train for an extra zero carriage. There it goes. So I'm back down to no coins. Then I'm going to take this card from the display that turns zeros into ones. Two zeros into ones. Because now I have two zeros to do that to. So, suddenly they become ones. That goes in my discard pile because that's worth two points at the end. The first card in the third row. I think we, we are thinking alike, Kelly. I know there's a little bit of a delay. Yeah, so I can't choose anything else from here now. But the reason I'm doing it in that order is that when I take this engineer here, so I take it and my train moves two spaces, right? One, two, get three points straight away. One, two, three. With my third conductor there, his only job is to move about on this score track. I, really should, I just realized you can't see while I'm talking about it. So now the, the engineer that I took. So we can see, I know this seems like it's it could be zoomed in a bit more, but the train could potentially get massive later on. Uh, so the requirement 
get uh, the carriage to a one. The requirements have been met up there, so I can get a free upgrade on this one. It's not amazing because you know you you can't upgrade it past a one, right? You have to do it right now, don't you? This doesn't need your conductor to be there. I know that for sure. Yeah, as soon as you fulfill the requirement, you get an immediate one-time bonus. Requirement for both trains showed on the left. This will always be the train car on the left. So as soon as the train car on the left meets that requirement... Oh no, but doing that though... Doing that means I will lose the upgrade down here, because I've just upgraded that to a 1. Which I might, I might have to do that, because... I don't think that there's another way. I don't think that there is another way to get another carriage here. I don't have another coin. Just looking for some other... Unless I got this first and just got coins, but then I wouldn't be moving my conductors. Because that's coming from that row. Well, I only moved this once. I only moved the train one space, didn't I? Because I stopped for the scoring. Second space, and it will get that now. Oh, already I'm tying myself in nuts. I think we're just going to have to lose that upgrade, right? Because another good thing about this module is you can put cards on top of this later on. It doesn't have to take up this space. You do lose what it's what's being covered up, but. Yeah, I think I think we're just gonna have to lose that, right? Do you agree? Because I could just get the upgrade and not move the conductors on. It wouldn't be awful, you know, to not score the what is it? Five, it'd be like five points right now if I get the conductors both on here. It wouldn't be terrible, would it? No, we're losing something either way. No, I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it. So in the display, we lose all you. So in the display then, I think we're going to just have to have one of the conductors not moving as much. Because I, th I think we should get one of the conductors moving. Yeah, we'll get the conductors moving because they'll start to earn us things if they've moved along enough. So that's going to be my last one. Hopefully it'll be worth some more points later. On my train, both conductors move forward to one, two, one. Can't move anymore, uh, but hopefully it will later on. So now we have finished the round and we have uh, intermediate scoring, era end scoring. So first of all, your train route bonuses happen. You can do them in any order you like. And so, oh no. Oh yeah, that's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So do this one, uh, two train movements, one, two, because I'm already on the compass, which is what gets you the bonus. Two train movements is fine. Going to need to buy a destination because this will happen at the end of every era. Even if I don't move my train by taking any more cards, then it's going to happen again in two rounds time. So I want at least another destination card here to make the most out of it. Three points for moving on to that space. So I've got six now. Uh, get a zero carriage. And I think, yeah, so I don't get caught. You can just, you know, stack them all up on one train and try and race because as soon as you get... Oh, I haven't got my bonus cards. Just realise, oh, you're, miss you're missing something on the table. Yes, uh, it's my bonuses. And they aren't the bonuses. Uh, everyone has the same set of mail cars, I believe they are. So as soon as you get to five carriages on your train, you get a sixth one for free that comes with some kind of bonus. So you're only going to get to use two of these four uh, in each game. But yeah, it can be a strategy to just race to five on one, get that bonus and use that to propel you further. But I think in this case, I'm going to go a 
little bit later. So I've lost that bonus now, right? That doesn't happen later. Does it? You should always follow the basic rules. Yeah, I, don't, I, I, I understand that. It doesn't really tell me in the rules. Like, have I missed that? I would assume I missed that bonus. It doesn't really tell me. Does it tell me in the FAQ? Guess who doesn't usually play with Module 5? The Additional Rules Files, it's called, in the BGG Files section. Then more zeros, module specific rules. No, there are no module specific rules for E. I would assume I've just missed out on it and I'm not allowed it because it happens immediately as soon as that requirement is fulfilled. I'm going to say I've lo I'm going to say I've lost out on it and maybe we'll get a subtitle or something at some point in the future for those future people. So. Had the new carriage, yes, yes, yes. Two coins, starting from the left column again, building everything back up. Then we've had the train route bonuses, so we can go to each train row, scores up to your conductor. So two, four, five. This is a game like... So this, this is designed by Helmut Ohli, who is co-designer of Russian Railroads. Quite like Russian Railroads. It's based on trains. No, that was what I was saying. Uh, that you, you score very little at the beginning of the game, and hopefully, as the rounds go on, you'll start to accumulate more and more and more. Right, so that is the first round. Well, the first era. The first two rounds. We've got 11 points. We've accumulated some stuff. It's time to go into the twos and build up a display. I will zoom into nothing so that I'm putting these uh, in the right place for this camera angle. Not that there's that many places that I could put them. I could be putting them too high up there. So what have we got here? Get even more coins, get better cards. It is lovely having a load of train routes that you have reached so that you get loads of those bonuses at the end of each era, but yeah, there, there are just so many ways to do things. Right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so get carriages to sevens. I don't think that's happening. Uh, we turn this face. We turn this uh, guy face down now to show that he's he's used. We're not waiting for anything for him. Okay then. So I do need a new destination. I don't think I'll move yet because maybe there'll be a double movement next round. But do any of these destination cards strike me as really exciting? Conductor move one conductor moves up to two spaces. Train moves even further. That's lovely, but with that, <laughs> it kind of spiral to needing to keep buying more and more of these things. I like so another train movement and any upgrade is nice, but a similar problem. I would have to buy more destinations. This one though, two free carriages, and that would happen two more times. Could get me to ten and complete my train. Is there anything else on that row that I'd like more? One conductor movement, probably not. Turn a one to a two, then a two to a four is nice. And you know, there is this contract here. Get four to one on your carriages, and you can do better than that. You can turn in this contract then to do any two upgrades. So the question mark is any upgrade, respecting the you know, descending order rule, and four points. There's a new uh, switch there that basically could score me eight points if I move my conductors a bit more. Get six twos and do any three upgrades. I've already got three twos. Or have two twos. I've done this. And then I could upgrade a zero to a one, a one to a two, and get three points. Could be good for starting you off on the upgrades.
More carriages is nice. I think I like this destination. I'm going to go for that. Yeah, it is. And as soon as I say it, I take it back. Because, like, that and that combos quite well. And then I could do any two upgrades. I just don't like the other destinations as much. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for the destination. Stick it on my train. So, even if I don't move it at all, this bonus is going to move it two spaces, and I'll get this bonus in, in scoring at the end of the next round. So, back up at the display. We lose the middle row. And could get even more destinations if I wanted to. Three coins is nice, especially if I want to build up into the like the next column and get some better actions. This could just be handed in straight away. Get me some more upgrades. More carriages is nice though. Especially, you know, I mentioned that mail car. Building up to that mail car is really good. I don't think we'll worry about moving the conductors yet. It's tempting to just get three coins and then just spend them all on carriages, get to that mail car. What would the bonus be, though? I could move the train and get another destination. Conductor movement, just more coins is nice. Upgrade zeros to ones. I think... So that is worth two points. What do I want from the top, though? Just get some coins. Or just have the train zoom in. If you're going to get that, though, you should get that one first. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna do a take back. I'm going to say that I did that one first. Because I could have. I'm the only one making... I'm the only one taking cards from these rows. So I'm kind of committing to <laughs> moving loads in these destinations. I'm probably like I've, my train's tiny. I'm, I'm leaving all this space for the train over this side, and it's the destinations that I'm going to end up getting loads of. So, yeah, the train is going to move four spaces by itself in scoring. So, from the display, I could hand this in right away, upgrade. Another one to a two. Keep this and hand it in later when it's kind of more lucrative. I could be upgrading the four and the two into something. Or just add more carriages now and get them up to ones. I'm going to get this contract for later. This four, two, one, I think. That's what I'm feeling like. Yeah. So, no scoring just yet. Just some more twos coming out. A few more choices to be made. So, we've got here... Complete another contract to complete this one. Some nice upgrades there. Zero to one, zero to one, two to four, which pretty much would do. If I could get some new carriages on first, that would fulfill that contract that I just took. Six ones is not very difficult. There's the train movement. I don't need any train movement, though, do I? Is that two points for every tra like train scoring thing that you've reached? That could be a, a nice source of points there. Only a couple of times, though. So I'm definitely leaning towards that straight away for upgrades. I realise then I've point, I'm pointed at two things. <laughs> this one here. Although that is a destination. That's that great bonus from the first round that I said. Uh, when you've done your two mail cars, get any three upgrades and four points.
So do we just want two new carriages, then do this upgrade and fulfill this contract? I think maybe. Are there any nice switches out there? So get this to fours, do any upgrade next to it, get two coins for taking that. That's nice, but it would stop me getting the two new carriages. But the two coins would pay for two carriages. Yeah, now you say it like that. I'm going to take this. And I am just going to use those two coins to pay for two carriages. I suppose I don't necessarily need two. I'm just going to pay for one carriage and have a coin. Because I need that to be there, don't I? So the bottom row's gone. Then, I think I want this upgrade up at the top. Which does discount some quite nice things up here. But, no, they're gone. So here, 2 to a 4 is going to be this one. And has to be this one, because you have to go in descending order. 0 to a 1, twice, is going to have to be these zeros. But just like that, so I keep that. Just like that, I have fulfilled this contract. 4, 2, 1. So I can have two upgrades, right? And four points. I think that would be quite good. So I don't have to have... I only have to have the carriages, right? It hasn't got the conductor symbol. I don't need the conductor there as well, do I? This is all what I've been going through when and they've all got a minimum requirement that you can exceed. Details things for each module's contract. So that's just like a base game contract. No, that's an A contract. The modules, the contracts. Yeah, it just needs the cars in your train. It doesn't need your conductor on them. So I could have any two upgrades and I think I'm going to just make one train really good so four goes to the next set of cards four becomes seven and I could just get that to become a 12 or keep building this up and stagger it so you could upgrade all of these other things get your upgrade for having a four in the first position Oh, yeah. As soon as I place that, I get that upgrade. Thanks, Liam. Yeah, as soon as I place that down, and I think that's maybe why I took that thing. Uh, as soon as I place that, it was a four there, so this is uh, upgraded. And the contracts, they can be better than the requirements. That's okay. So I could turn that into a seven as well, or I could turn that into a twelve. I think I'm just going to get this to a twelve and not worry about it. Better for scoring, and so that's my two upgrades. Four points. One, two, three, four. And that's sorted. So, hey, Heroic Logic, how's it going? You like first class? I'm glad. Let me know if I'm doing well at it. So, here is our situation right now. Here's our train. Got a lot of destinations, but automatic movement is going to take us to the end of those already. We've got one more decision left to make here. So that, I've got five ones right now. That's some good upgrades. Three ones into twos for fulfilling that later. This, mm, I don't I don't like that. I, I, no, it would be a waste of the train movement because I wouldn't be able to get another destination. That destination is quite nice, right? It's two points for every one of those. And I would have five of them when the train got to that. I just, this round wouldn't be able to make the train get there. So it seems like a bit of a waste. Oh, you know what? I think a load of this might be a bit of a waste because... So I either take the contract now and wait for when I've got six ones. There's no waste there. It just wouldn't kick in for a little bit. Or do I get this triple conductor movement for both tracks 
But then looking at my train, oh, I've knocked my conductor off when I upgraded, didn't I? I've only got one space that each of them can move. So even if I spent my three coins, oh, I could spend my three coins, couldn't I, and get a mail car that would get me coins to get more things. Maybe I do that. Yeah, I'm going to take the triple conductor movement. I think this is all right, right? I'm going to take... I'm going to take the conductor movement. But first of all, before I do the conductor movement, let's... Buy two carriages right here. Here's where the scoreboard's going to have to shift. And to be honest, I'm probably going to have to zoom right out of this train zoomed in angle. Two, ca two coins for two carriages. That's my fifth carriage. So suddenly, Conductor's got three spaces he can move now. Let's uh, start the process of adjusting this camera angle. So that it all fits in. Which, to be honest, isn't going to last very long, is it? Especially since I'm going to have to buy more destinations going this way. We're going to have to just go to the full, uh, full thing. So now I can decide... I can decide which bonus that I want. So two train movement would be a waste. Two more conductor movement. We've already got too much of that. Upgrading zeros into ones is nice. Especially if I want to take that six contract and then turn three ones into twos. That's nice. But I feel like the best thing to do is to put this mail car down. So this is just something you get for free. As soon as you get the fifth carriage in a train, you choose one of your mail cars, and everyone's got the same selection of mail cars. Two more coins. Then, so I only need to spend two of these. So I spend two of these coins to get two more zeros here, and now my conductors can each move three spaces. I could spend that last coin and get the other mail car out, but I think I'm better off waiting for that, at least till I've got other things that I want to do. I suppose I could get ones ready as a scoring is about to happen. But I'm about to get... Well, actually, yeah. So I'm about to get a load of zeros here. So why not save that? And then I could even have the conductor movement or some upgrades once I've got all these free carriages. Yeah, I won't pay for any more. But I will take the card that you can now see. One, two, three. So these don't score anything yet. It's just you don't want to waste your conductor movement, do you? I've already done uh, one wasted conductor movement. So you go there. And that's my cards for this round. So scoring, first of all, we go to the train routes. So I'll do this one first. And let them combo out. Two train movement. One, two. So now that one's unlocked. And five points. 120. Then, turn a zero into a one. I think... Will I just carry on on this uh, this one train? No, let's let's do this one a little bit as well. No, let's keep going. Not that it matters that much, in this case anyway. So, oh, that one was get a new carriage, wasn't it? So your your decision here is, I can keep going to get that mail car, but you can keep going, and your tenth carriage is you also get for free. You get the points on it. And then two free upgrades. But you kind of want that to come later when the free upgrade is like 7s to 12s if you can uh, help it. So yeah, this is the one I'm doing, isn't it? I've done two train movements and then get a free carriage. I think I'm going to... I'm going to do the other mail carriage. What's the other mail carriage going to be, though? Zeros to ones. I think it's going to be zeros to ones, isn't it? Yeah. So get the free carriage. There. I'm going to do zeros to ones. Let's get these to ones. Then two more train movements. One, two. Eight points for being on that space for the first time. 28. And then upgrade a zero to a one. So I'll do one down here. Then two coins. That's easy. Could have done that first, actually. And then two free zero carriages. I think I would need to zoom out. I'm just going to have to give up on that angle and just come out here. I 
I think I might put them both on this train. Try and get me to that 10. Because in the multiplayer game, you're kind of worried because... Uh, well, actually, the, the longer you leave it, the more points you get for doing it. You just... At a certain point, which can't happen in a two-player game, actually, or a solo game, at a certain point, you'll get more points, but you'll only get one uh, special upgrade. So... But there is this bonus for the first three conductors to get to the end. So in the solo game, yeah, it's another thing that you're just racing by yourself for. But I think that's all the bonuses I've had now. So scoring this time is the conductors have got to these points. So every numbered carriage scores 12, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22. I'm on 28, so that's going to put me up to 50. Pop a cube on there. So that's not too bad at all. And we go into the final era, the final two rounds. Uh, where's my three cards? So, am I all caught up? I got that zero carriage in the end, didn't I? So we've got a switch that wants two 12s to be present. Two sevens. Yeah, four coins there. Oh, look at my uh, spectacularly straight card placements. Just loads of empty... Well, that could be good, because I move four automatically. It's not another, you know, bonus, but there's 20 points at the end of the game. Nice, isn't it? Uh, then we go over here. There, there. Just easy to get to bonus. And any upgrade can be good at the stage of the game we're getting to. I can kind of ignore as well these train movement cards just because I moved so much by myself at this point we've got the cards that get you uh, an end game bonus card which I could like I don't think I've particularly taken like I've taken a lot of destination cards haven't I so the ones that score me points I've taken two of those there is a, a scoring card out there that gets me four points for each of these and I've taken two conductor movement cards could be something to think about. Right. What am I going to do? So, that switch would kick in. Wouldn't really get me bonuses right now, though. Upgrades haven't really happened, have they? Zero to one and then any upgrade is decent. Hmm. Trains moving, I can just ignore. That destination is kind of calling out to me for a nice a nice sweet 20 points. More coins would get me into this column, which would give me train stroke conductor movement. You know, one space for each coin that you spend. Conductors moving more is always nice because getting them to 10 is getting them to Constantinople. And there's another triple conductor movement there. 30 points for getting both of your conductors to Constantinople. I would need like one more carriage here for them to have three spaces to move to, which I could spend a coin if I need to. So I feel like triple conductor movement is a nice shout because 30 points I know that it's not all the way moving them to the end but it's closer isn't it 30 points and if I upgrade more things they've moved along and all of that and you know your things only score their points at the end here if your conductors on them that does get rid of all of the get an end game scoring card cards what else would I get here? Hi, Martin. I like the look of this game. It is really good. It is a few years old now. I, I, I presume still available, right? I don't know. But uh, yeah. At the time of buying, it was quite cheap because it's a, it's a card game. Okay, so it's a really cool, different kind of building up combo-y kind of game. So ignore all of the train things. Getting two sevens gets me any two upgrades. That is on the horizon, isn't it? 
All I have to do is upgrade the 4 to a 7 and that's done. That's tempting then. And then the destination is tempting. Because I will reach it. There's no question. It's just that any future destinations are kind of off the table then. Unless I do a bit of train movement. Which I could potentially pay for if I get some coins. I think... Is there anything in the middle row that's better? A 0 to a 1 at this stage isn't very good. Could turn the four to a seven, but surely something else will let me do that. I am taking these three cards. So order, I don't think. Oh, I can't use the train angle anymore, can I? Order, I don't think particularly matters because they're such different things. So the contract when they get to sevens. So since I'm doing the conductor movement first, I'm going to spend a coin. And these coin actions, by the way, you can. I think I did it in the last bonus phase, right? No, it was before the bonus phase. You can do these actions in the middle of the. End, game, end of era scoring, in the middle of end game scoring, uh, if it combos more things for you, it's uh, it's great so I want another zero there so I can move both my conductors one, two, three, and if I end up with four coins at some point, if I stop spending them, then I could buy myself an end game scoring card four points for each of those that I've taken which is already 12 points and then some more conductor movement if I took that card, which might get them to the end uh, so yeah, no, no other decisions to be made, I have just taken all of these things. I might have finished off trains for good. And you have to think that I don't potentially need... Hmm. Now, I've got ways of getting carriages at the end of the game. I haven't got bonuses that will move my conductors at all, though. So it's all very well and good getting to that 10 stage. But you'll only get the Constantinople points and stuff if you've done it... If you've got a way of moving your conductors as well. So if I can get a load of coins up here, I'm getting two. If we could get some coins for some extra conductor movement, that might really help me. I hear Santa loves first class. So switches, get a two and a conductor on, eight points each for the carriage. Another 12 point engineer. Train movement isn't exciting anymore because my trains move themselves. Another nice contract, but a contract that rewards uh, train movement. Halastar or Leicester. Yeah, it's it's another one that maybe doesn't like doesn't give off like the 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 exciting vibe that I think you get when you're playing it just from just from looking at particularly the box. It's got, not to the same degree, it's got a bit of Concordia syndrome that, from looking at it, I can understand it not seeming that uh, exciting. But playing it, wow. So there's the conductor movement, but that's gonna, that's gonna that would need a lot of carriages to be bought. You maybe get a triple train movement, and that's a good destination. 15 more points and another carriage. It seems a bit late for all of that. What about that would kick off straight away and can take a 1 to a 7? This is never happening, 12, 12, 7. This one here, any two upgrades. Hmm. So what do I need here? I'm on 8. So I only need one carriage here on my train, and then I get the 10, and my conductor just has to move two spaces, which I could potentially do with coins. I think I think down here it's got to be this contract because 1-1, one, 1-1, one, 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 I've done that ages ago. Uh, so, turn a 1 into a 2. Oh yeah, get a different card. A 1 into a 2. 4 into a 7 is going to be this one. Uh, 
and then a two into a four is the last one. Now, this, we'll just not see the edge of the train for a bit. This is now a four, so this kicks in and upgrades this train. And so it would have been nice if I'd already made this a two somehow. I don't think there's a way. Unless I did like a, any upgrade on it. So that turns from a one into a two. For free, I've done that contract. Now, I've got two sevens. So I could hand this in, but I could wait, right? Because seven to a 12, definitely want to do a free upgrade on that. Four to a seven isn't too bad though. Or, oh wow, okay. Handing this in, and I'm gonna do the two upgrades on the same car. So turn the four into a seven, and then the seven into a 12. Because this is done now, right? That's face down. We've had those upgrades. That contract's done. Because, would you look at this switch up here? I know it's not four coins. But, it's two coins. And look at it. Two twelves. Free any upgrades. So it would turn my seven into a twelve. Do I want... I think, Kelly, the, the top one was already done. As soon as the, uh, do you mean for this for this engineer? I think the top one got done ages ago because this was already a four when I took the engineer. So as soon as I took the engineer, uh, the top one got upgraded. They happen uh, separately to each other, but I think I think I already did that one. Because so now I'm thinking, yeah. So so taking this on the train here. These are now 12s, so I could upgrade this to a 12 and this to a 4. Wouldn't it be great if this was already a 4, though, and it became a 7 for free? It's just that to do that, I would have to take a not great card. Yeah, I don't think it's worth doing that. I'm going to take this engineer. They're already 12, so they both immediately happen. 7 becomes a 12, 2 becomes a 4, which is still 2 points, isn't it? And so, we have the final decision of the game, really. And I think... Oh, I didn't take two coins for taking that card. I think the decision should probably be conductor moving. Right? I know it would only really happen for one of my trains. Actually, so all of these zeros would be wasted. All these zero bonuses would be wasted. But... So I am on, well you can't see zoomed in here. So I'm on train eight, so I need to buy one carriage and then I get the end and two carriages here. I've got three coins and then I would get to the end of my trains. Three conductor movement would get them both there and I would get 30 points for each in the end. And they would both score their points for having their ends on and the ends would do two free upgrades. So I think that's, I don't think there's any question really. I think I need to actually move. Oh, ruining the green screen illusion. I think I... Luckily I can do this. Because the... Because the chat takes away some of the normal room. Uh, let's... We're not going to need... So I'm not buying an endgame card then if I'm spending these coins elsewhere. Unless I end up with four coins somehow at the end of the game. I think that's got to be a better idea than anything else, right? Zeros to ones at this stage. At best, that's going to get me like five points. So what? Two train movement isn't needed. I haven't got destinations for them to go to. Like two to a four. I haven't even got a two at this point. So I'd have to spend the any upgrade getting a one to a two first. Haven't got that. I think that's the only decision. So spending coins before I take this. Or before it kicks in at least. So you are now six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, you still can't, still not enough room. I'm forgetting you have to take the card and then the tile. I forget quite how huge the trains get. Oh, so this has already happened, right? So that can go face down. Then. We need the tenth thing, so that tile gets put there for free, automatically. And then, 
so as not to waste conductor movement, I'm going to spend another couple of coins getting zeros here, which I know is a bit of a waste. I've got three free zeros coming in these bonuses here. But it means I will get this car ending, and then when I get my both conductors move three spaces, one, two, don't mind wasting there because he's at the end. A conductor has reached Constantinople. He's the first conductor to reach Constantinople. That's 20 points. One, two, three spaces. A conductor has reached Constantinople. He's the second to reach it. So I get 10 points. I think there's no like, there's no extra restrictions, is there, in uh, on solo gaming for this? Uh, you can only have one card from each row. After taking each card, discard. All of the rules are the same. So yeah, in the normal game, if you are quick enough, one person can claim the first and second spaces if they are the first and second conductors to get there. So I think that's pretty good. And so these happen as soon. Do these happen as soon as I put the train down? Your tenth for the mail for the the end of your train. As soon as you get that, you get the upgrade. Not that it matters too much because I'm not doing any more actions. So the upgrades, two upgrades here should be four to seven, seven to twelve. And then this one here, I suppose, turn a 1 to a 2, then a 2 to a 4. Not the best free upgrade, but I think a pretty decent situation to be in there. So that is all of the cards taken. And... So what did I do? Oh yeah, I did another Conductor card. So it would be worth, I think I'm going to be one coin short, unfortunately, to be able to get that. Right. So, train bonuses first. I think we can still zoom in on those. Kind of. Uh, so, in any order, but I'm, I'm just going to take... So, two train movement. One, two. Zero carriage. My trains are complete. I can't have that. Two coins. Can take at any time. Two free carriages. Can't have that. Uh, two train movement. One, two. Puts me on the 20-point space, which is another 20. Puts me on 50. And another cube. And finally, turn a zero into a one. Well, let's let's even up the, the trains a little bit. So that's all of my bonuses from up there, I think. It's four coins, unfortunately, to get an endgame scoring card. Could have been great, but I think we've done pretty well. Uh, so then, the conductors are at the end, so every carriage scores. So it's 12, 24, 48, 50, 56, 62, 67. So another 50... 67 and then at the end of the game oh yeah end game oh yeah this i have got an end game scoring card uh which is for those the the cards that upgraded things so i've got one two two of those i guess throughout the game uh so that's two times two is four and every coin is worth a point at the end so not completely wasted although getting one of these would have been worth like 16 points i think at the end or 12 or something uh, so final scoring which you know it's for, for for stream purposes anyway when it's the only first class stream uh, a bit anticlimactic that i don't have anything to compare this with there's no chart that's like this is what your score should be and as i said it can vary massively based on the modules that you're using the order that the cards came out in those modules and of course how good your decisions were throughout the game but my score for this is 174 is that right i think it is i thought it was 124 but no 174 that seems high now i don't i, I can't remember what we got in the playthrough but it, it's different you know when you play in two players hi monica you're just in time to see my my glorious finish First class is a quick one, isn't it? Which is good, because I have to get something and be ready for not long from now. But there we go. That is that is first class. That is the solo version of it. That's some more modules. So you can see, if you'd like to see how it works multiplayer, which is very, very similarly, but you have you have kind of the extra the extra choice of, you know, when you have a row you've got a row of six cards whether you're playing one two three or four players so the more players there are you've, you've got a chance you know of getting multiple cards from a single row as so if you're playing a four player game 
the rest of the row only gets discarded when four have been taken from it. So there's there's potential for you to think about, maybe I could get these two things that work together. Whereas in the solo game, you are locked into, you're getting one and that's it from each row, which you know, neither are better or worse than each other. It's just a, a different a different feel, a different thing to think about. Uh, but all the other stuff, upgrading your train, the race to Constantinople, everything else is the same for multiplayer. So I've done a two-player playthrough that you can check out on the channel elsewhere as well, which has, so the gameplay is very similar, but the modules are different. So I've played with uh, celebrities and postcards. So postcards can double the bonuses that you get from these. So this is even better. And uh, like imagine the, the amount of train movement I could have had doubled. You would have had to spend every action just getting more destinations though at that point. Uh, but yes, you can get so those and celebrities double the value of a carriage. And what was the other thing? Luggage. What did luggage do? It was like a month ago. I can't I remember. Because done filmed loads of games since then. Oh yeah, the, the luggage gives you points right away and you know the, the top putting luggage on the top gets you coins and also a coin for every luggage you previously took. And at the bottom it gets you points and points for everyone you previously took. So progressively loads and loads and loads as you take more of them. And then there is a, a murder mystery module that you can also play with. So you pick two modules each game, mix and match them. There's five that come with the game. And I think there were two, there's at least one, but there might even have been two mini expansions that gave you new modules. I never got those though. I have got this. I've never used this. Was it in a... I don't think it was in an advent calendar. It was in something. I've got some kind of punch board for it. But uh, as I said at the start, Race doesn't really like first class. <laughs> so uh, apart from solo and filming and stuff, I haven't played it that many times. It's, it's one of the ones, though, that has kind of stubbornly stuck around that a lot of the time, if Rach really isn't into something, and unless it's something that's, uh, you know, I could I can play solo massively, uh, which I can with this, I know. But a lot of things that Rach is just not interested in, a lot of the time I just think, well, let's move on to other things then that we that we both like. But First Class is one that for... For over five years now, has uh, has persevered. I thought about no, that there's something to this. There's 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 uh, there's a gem in here that has to be kept, has to be shown around. Uh, I like it anyway. Monica, you got you got a mystery box. Was was it board game related? I I assume because she's telling us now, it's a it's a positive mystery box. Is it um, Eon's End by any chance? I saw Antoinette. On, uh, on Twitter has got her Kickstarter, the the new legacy Eon's End that was the last Kickstarter about nine months ago, which I actually, I made a group pledge for that, right? That should be arriving at some point soon, though. So yeah, I don't know how we're going to handle that because, uh, yeah, an, an advantage of doing role-player adventures with Rach has been that, yeah, we get to do this ongoing series, which I don't really tend to do. I tend to be, do a video for a game and then move on from it and... It just kind of sits there, but role player adventures has. We will get to the end, and you will see everything that happened as we get to the end. So, like maybe we'll do that with Eon's End Legacy. I don't know though, because we've only played bits right of the other two boxes that came before the New Age and Outcasts. I did do like as a so you as a. An extra thing that I did, I have got a playthrough filmed for the first one of New Age, and I was going to like just go through it as an extra side thing that I know it probably wouldn't particularly do that well in votes, but I got excited about playing Eon's End again a few weeks ago and crammed one in. That will be coming up at some point. It's kind of waiting in the wings, ready to, to go up at some point soon. It was Dinodocus from Kickstarter and a playmat. Oh, a new dinosaur game. Nice. I haven't seen that. I've seen, is it Dino Genesis? I've never played that, but it looks cool. Uh, Dinosaur Island we played. Oh, that, I know there's Dinosaur World now as well, isn't there? And uh, Roar and Right. Oh, another kind of coming soon. I don't know when this is going to be. It's probably like we're looking at January or something. But uh, Obsession that I know, you know, the kind of Victorian England themed game. Uh, I know people have raved about for the last couple of years i think since it came out and it's always been uh hard to get or kind of 
expensive because of its scarcity. But I did, uh, I, I pre-ordered that, and I've just heard that Games Law, an English game shop, uh, just got, like, their copies are imminent, so that should be coming in quite soon. Other stuff that's coming up. So that's it for streams this week. But there is a playthrough for Square in Circleville. A great um, area control game, but tons of little area control competitions going on at the same time. And a great strange theme of there is this real uh, town of Circleville, Ohio, is it? That was built on this circular earthwork and the town was all circular. The roads were all circular. And at some point they decided we don't like this. We're going to make it square like everyone else. Grid, grid the streets like everywhere else. So that's what the game is about. We are, we are unfortunately gridding it. Uh, but... Yeah, it's it's a it's a great and different game, and I, the the solo playthrough, the solo comes with three different, four different bots, and because you're using one of the player mats that the bots are on, you can play with up to three different bots at a time. I did two in the playthrough because I'm not that brave, uh, but you can see how I did against two AIs uh, in that. That'll be coming up on Sunday, I believe. If you're a patron and patreon.com forward slash slicker drips, if you'd like to join up, every little helps. Uh, helping me do this more and more hey let's 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 do this full time in 2022 eh maybe uh but yes if you're on patreon it went up today concordia solitaria solo mode for concordia and it works spectacularly well i did the solo mode of that because that's what overwhelmingly won the vote but also there is a two-player co-op way of playing concordia that works beautifully hopefully uh rach would be keen on doing a stream of that at some point and i've got a couple more maps for concordia and at a certain point, I think I had a, at least another one or two. And at a certain point, I was like, no, I need to make everything fit in one box. I'll sell a map or two and just get it to fit all in one box. And then when I've been playing co-op and I played the solitary to film it and stuff, and I've been re getting really giddy about Concordia. And then I realized there was like a, a map that came out that added a fish market expansion and all this stuff. I basically, I've bought more maps for Concordia and I want to do streams uh, of solitary. So hopefully... You're into Concordia, and if you're not yet, hopefully the, the playthrough might tempt you. That's a long way of saying, you can watch Concordia Solitaria on Patreon, uh, and it's coming to the normal channel uh, next week. Hi, Joel. Oh, no worries. You can watch back. And, uh, yeah. But spoilers, I'll, I'll, I'll hide my score. Uh, but, yes, there, there is stuff coming up next week. There's going to be streams... I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be. You can look at the, the social media things on Monday for what the schedule exactly will be. Hopefully there will be role player adventures. Uh, episode, well, Adventure 7. Episode 8, technically, because we did the side quest this week. Yeah, there will be the next adventure of role player adventures. Fingers crossed. It always depends on uh, if Rach can do it. But I would like... I think that I've got a feeling that it's going to be a long one, but I've got a feeling that there's going to be a youthier... Uh, live stream. I would like to do a live stream of the Loop. I would like to do a stream of the Paladins of the West Kingdom expansion. I would like to do one of uh, Keeper, but Keeper's a bit of a, a tough game that I haven't practiced yet. Maybe we'll get to play. We'll play it at least um, multiplayer over the weekend. But hey, uh, yeah, hopefully there will be there'll be there'll be some mixture of those. We'll see how much I can fit in. And yeah, I'm progressively I mentioned like I've I've got a cold which. I, I don't think, like, I was worried that I was just going to be sneezing all through this, because what I've been doing all day, going to be all drowsy and sneezing constantly. But, yeah, so maybe maybe it's just the hot lights that have uh, stopped that happening. But, yeah, I, hopefully, I don't get more ill, because I seem to, haven't been ill for ages. Well, for obvious reasons. It's all masked up and uh, isolated for big periods over the last couple of years. But, yeah, it's 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 feeling a bit like the... The last cold that I have, that it's just, it's just a cold, but it just drags on and on and on and on for ages. And who wants that, right? Oh, it's all uh, sniffly, stuffed up voiceovers for these things. But hey, maybe, maybe that's the way it'll have to be. I'll try my best. I'll do as many as I can. I should get the notification lights. Yeah, you, YouTube sometimes doesn't send the things out properly as well. But uh, I like be I like you being here when I'm live as well, John. Sometimes it's not meant to be. There'll, there'll be more streams uh, next week, though. And maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe there'll be some more things in the day. I like the fact that it's, like, it, it's tougher with board games because there is, like, there's practice time, there's setup time, there's all of that stuff. Like, 
video game streams, you can do this kind of longer thing where you could switch between games and you can have these um, big gaps in in things, and it just kind of uh, it just kind of morphs on Twitch, doesn't it? That you can just change what you're doing. Whereas uh, I suppose I could just title it on YouTube that it's just board game stream, and we could do some shorter things. Oh, one thing I really want to do before Christmas is uh, I think I mentioned this the other day. There, are, you know, Super Skill Pinball, the roll and write game that I love that I streamed months and months ago, there is a print-and-play Christmas table for it that I would love to play, and I think that would be uh, that would be a cool stream, because the, the original pinball stream was a fun one, playing that uh, Dragon Slayer one for the first time. Concordia Solitaria hasn't come out in the US yet. I hope I hope it comes out soon, because it's great. And it does, like, it's not just, like, solo rules to add on to Concordia. It is a whole component thing, new dice, you replace all you don't use any cards from normal concordia it's all these new solitario ones because as you play a card the card says on it what the bot will do if you play this card so it's another thing of you're playing cards yes to fit in with your plan and get your things going and score points and all of that but now you can see if you do this the bot will do this is it worth you getting these resources if the bot's going to score all of these points from it? Is it worth you getting that card if the bot is going to get to build a house potentially somewhere that will ruin your plans? Oh, it's so good. Uh, oh, what have you got a copy of, Martin? Is it Super Skill Pinball? Stevie, Stevie likes Super Skill Pinball. Great. You know, the one, the, there are many regrets about uh, not getting to Essen this year. But uh, up there is not not being able to get a copy of the the new standalone Super Skill Pinball that I think is out in the states right now, and I believe it was at Essen. Either way, the wherever it's out, I haven't got it. Whiz Kids, I love the pinball game. Do you, do you want streams of it? Have you got a copy? Is it not too nightmarish to get things to England? Hey, I know postage is crazy, but hey, I've got a load of Super Skill Pinball. I've got four tables and a print and play Christmassy one, so yeah, uh, I'll I'll try and do that next week. Um, yeah, it, it might just be me. Maybe Rach is up for some pinball. We'll see. You'll see in the schedule next week. Uh, but yeah, get get your tables printed out. You can see. I think Wizkids have said on Twitter. I saw uh, the designer Jeff Engelstein uh, tweeted that you know a, a link to the the print and play files. So you can print the table out and all of that stuff, and uh, yeah, maybe we'll we'll give that a go on stream next week. Because who doesn't want some more pinball, and who doesn't want Christmassy pinball? But I've, I've just been going on for ages, haven't I? It's nice just having a, a little chat after the stream, though. That's what I'm kind of thinking. Like, should I do like not particularly edited versions of the live things? Because it would take me forever to edit like the entire stream. But I wonder if I should do like you know a cut down version without the intro -y bit where I'm still where something has inevitably gone wrong and the end bit where I'm chatting I don't know or I thought if, if I ever do like a stream maybe around Christmas where I'm doing more things in one stream they'd have to be smaller games because I'd be setting them up for ages wouldn't I but maybe you'd do that stream and then separate it into other videos later like I got an email that like I think other channels have done this right so like a lot of people only stream on Twitch I know some only like Paul uh, Grogan streams on YouTube uh, but some channels only stream on Twitch. I got an email that you can become like a a Twitch affiliate, but and then you can do things on there. It puts ads on, and I think you get revenue and things from it, and they like you more. But um, if you do that, you are you have to be exclusive live streaming. So I could still put the videos up on YouTube later, but I don't know. That seems like that seems like a big thing to cut off because most people, because my channel is on YouTube. Most people are watching live on YouTube. The stuff could go up there later. I don't know. It's just an email that I got. Nothing has happened. I only got the email last night, and I've been pretty woozy the last couple of days. Uh, Marty does not have a Christmas blanket. He does have a nice pink uh, blanket that you've seen on the streams. It's his favourite blanket at the moment. I was just checking. He has not joined me for this stream at all. When I He was up here this morning when I was doing things. But uh, I went downstairs for a bit, and he realised that the radiators were on. So that's you're not getting him out of his radiator bed until you're prepared to feed him, basically. So that'll be it for Marty for now. I would highly recommend Super Skill Pinball. Well, you can check out. I did a stream of uh, two of the tables from it as well. Marty definitely wouldn't tolerate any type of Christmas clothes or any type of any of that really we did I think the only thing we had like that was you know you can get these 
it's not it's not like a lead well it kind of is a lead but it's like a harness that you put around like you can get them for dogs as well i think like for small dogs like rather than a lead being attached to a collar it's attached to a kind of body harness parachute thing that you put on we got one of those for Monty because you know he's a house cat and he's quite an active cat so when we got him we thought you know, as soon as he grew up a little bit, we thought, well, what if we could get him out in the garden and stuff like that? So we put the the thing on him, the the bodysuit harness thing, and it was just a night. It was it was horrible getting it getting it on him, as you can imagine. Cats don't. Well, some cats might be okay with it. Marty does not want uh, to be wearing things. And when we finally got it on him, he just kept kind of collapsing to the side and feebly kicking to try and get it off himself. So there was no getting him outside to even try that thing out because, yeah, he just kept tilting over. So no, no Christmassy things for Marty. Although I think it's it's it, there's no time now, but maybe for next Christmas, like it would be great if Rach could draw a do a Santa Marty to go along with. And we've got the two Martys at the bottom again. Anniversary Marty keeps popping up. It's supposed to just be Space Marty. Let's have them both there for now. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe there'll be a Santa Marty at some point. Oh, imagine a Santa Marty mug. That'd be amazing. Or a jumper. Oh, we can really make this take off. I know Mr. Mister Plow is a great jumper, but Santa Marty, that could be a great one as well. Anyway, all right, I'm going to have to go. Thank you very, very much for joining me, everyone. Hope you enjoyed some first class and it intrigued you if you haven't seen uh, about the game before. I mentioned all of those things before. I won't go through all of that again. There will be streams. There will be probably new things uh, next week. Hopefully there'll be a role-player adventures. Hopefully there'll be a pinball. Maybe there'll be time for other things. Other than that, we'll see how I get on. I've said all of that already, though. I won't... <laughs> and I've said all of that already. I'm just stuck in a time loop. I need to go and have a lie down, don't I? Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Thank you for your support over the months and years and for being here with me today. Thanks a lot, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.